Well, let's now shift our focus to some news from the southern state of Tamil Nadu where the disqualification of the 18 AIADMK rebel members of the Legislative Assemblies allied with the Sasikala camp has now reached the Madras High Court. The Madras High Court will be hearing the plea of the 18 MLAs challenging their disqualification by the Tamil Nadu Assembly Speaker on Monday. Meanwhile, Tamil Nadu Governor C. Vidyasagar Rao has met Indian Home Minister Rajnath Singh in New Delhi on Tuesday and reportedly briefed him about the political situation in the state. Now, the meeting came in the backdrop of Tamil Nadu Assembly Speaker disqualifying the 18 legislators allied with the Sasikala faction. Now, according to reports, Governor Vidyasagar Rao briefed the Home Minister on the current situation in Tamil Nadu and on its political uncertainty which is presently prevailing in the state. Now, the disqualification of the 18 MLAs has also dealt a major blow to Sasikala's nephew TTV Dinakaran who had threatened to bring down the government of Chief Minister E. Palnisami in Tamil Nadu. Now, recently, the two factions of the AIADMK led by O. Panira Selvam and E. Palnisami had merged to, had merged to end the crisis within the party. Now, later, the two factions also merged and then expelled Sasikala as AIADMK's General Secretary, triggering a fresh crisis for the state of the Tamil Nadu government. Now, the disqualified legislators had earlier demanded a floor test by E. Palnisami to prove his majority at the floor of the House. And for more on this, we are joined in by our political affairs editor, Karthikeya Sharma. Karthikeya, interesting times in Tamil Nadu politics. The vacuum left by J. Jalalita after her demise simply does not seem to fill up. And what we are now seeing is yet another crisis where the 18 MLAs who were disqualified have now knocked on the doors of the Madras High Court. Absolutely. I think, you know, it's, uh, you know, I will, I will not be presumptuous to say that it might spoil the curry, but it does have the potential to spoil a lot of things for the acting chief minister of Tamil Nadu. It does have the potential to, you know, rock the board, if not completely destabilize it for BJP's grand ambition to uh, incorporate ADMK into its larger uh, umbrella of NDA. So, you know, the, these are the issues which, which are there. But, you know, what surprising part is the Tamil Nadu has not been stabilized in past one year. And that's the fact of the matter. You know, Sasikala is out, but, you know, the matter has become now uh, sub -judice. But the fact that the High Court has agreed to listen to it, now, now it will become a constitutional issue. And the constitutional issue would be a decision taken by the Speaker. Can it be, can it be revoked by the judiciary? You know, I have spoken to a number of people. These are the grey areas of Indian constitution. Generally, judiciary and the legislature don't collide on matter which concerns the House, the Speaker. But they stay away. They respect each other. But in this case, you know, it can take a different turn. Though it has happened many a time that uh, in 1980s, one of the speakers of the northeastern state was summoned by the acting chief justice and he almost got arrested. But then the Lok Sabha speaker Shivraj Patel intervened in the matter. That's mm -hmm. the 1980s. So things have happened in the past, but the whole sense of propriety prevailed at that time. And the sense of propriety was judiciary, executive and legislature. They are three different domains and they should not and must not collide in parliamentary systems. Absolutely. A very interesting point there raised by you, Karthikeya, because the Speaker, by, by under the Constitution, is the person who has the right to disqualify a member of Parliament on grounds that he sees fit. And also the meeting of Governor Vidya Sagarav meeting with Rajnath Singh in this context, how significant is that? I think uh, what Vidya Sagarav has done is to uh, brief the Home Minister Rajnath Singh. And uh, now... If you look at the fact that the size of the assembly has decreased, the ADMK has got a complete majority over the house. So the no confidence motion is all set to fail. But if the court challenges the decision of the uh, speaker, then the matter becomes again about constitutional propriety. Should the courts be interfering in the matter? There have been many a times, for example, how did the government of Mulayam Singh in the uh, state of Uttar Pradesh survive for so many years? Because the speaker did not take the decision. How is the... How is... The, and that's the most, I, I think, interesting thing. Jagan Mohan Reddy has got, got more than uh, 25 to 30 MLAs. Um, Saleh, you'll be surprised that in the state of Andhra Pradesh, 10 of his MLAs have gone, I think 8 of his MLAs have gone on to, lawmakers have gone to become the ministers in the government of Chandra Babu Naidu. Why? Because Speaker has not taken the call on the split in the party. So, you know, when anti-defection law was constituted, it was not written in white or black. 
what is the power of the speaker in terms of the time he should take to decide so it is like the power of the president of india he can sit on the file so these are the constitutional loopholes but right the propriety demands that the both ambits respect each other right kartikeya do continue to stay on with us meanwhile i'm told that our correspondent in chennai revati rajivan has also joined us in this broadcast revati this is a very significant development um now the madras high court will be hearing the plea by the 18 disqualified mlas what is the sense that you are getting there in chennai on this story well uh, that is the last resort for the ttv vinakaran group of mlas uh, as far as all the uh, proceedings are concerned and uh, the tamil nadu governor will also be coming to chennai today and the uh, chief minister is likely to meet him also remember the madras high court had said that the flow test cannot take place until 20th of this month which is tomorrow so tomorrow is the last day until which um, the governor the speaker cannot order a flow test so perhaps Uh, right after tomorrow that is on the 21st if the speaker orders a flow test then as per the numbers that we have now eps can prove his majority very very easily because after the disqualification of the 18 mlas the magic number that they re- that they require is 108 mlas and uh, the eps side already has about over 114 mlas on his side so if uh, there is no uh, uh, no such order from the madras high court in favor of ttv vinakaran and if the madras high court uh, uh, gives an order saying that you can go ahead with the flow test Uh, the day after tomorrow then very clearly the it is advantage eps and ops it is game over for tv with the nakaran right revati will have to leave it there for the time being but we'll of course keep coming back to you as the story unfolds in chennai thank you very much indeed for both revati rajivan and kartikeya sharma for joining us on this story